Super Nodage Party is one of those games that really calls back to the wacky Japanese games of yesteryear. Now, some of you guys out there might be too young to remember, but at the time, many Japanese developers were making experimental or just flat out crazy games with varying degrees of success. Now, although these days bigger studios don't take that many risks or take these kind of risks, indie developers have definitely picked up the slack in that regard. Now for Super Nodage Party to happen, all it took was one Japanese comedian with some crazy ideas and a publisher willing to embrace the insanity. Now here in this review, we're going to tell you what went into making the game a reality, talk about the games that are included here themselves, and if it's worth picking up even if you don't know the language. Danny from the Famicast here, now celebrating 10 years of gaming goodness. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment down below and we may read it out on our bi-weekly show called The Famicast. At any rate, today we're taking a look at the return of Japanese wackiness with this Super Nodage Party review. Super Nodage Party. Super Nodage Party is made up of 16 different party or mini games. Now, while some of them are fairly simple in scope, others provide a more tr traditional gameplay arc. Now, before we actually get into this collection of games, I think it's interesting to actually take a look at the backstory here. So, the idea behind Super Nodage Party is the brainchild of Japanese com comedian Hikaru Crystal Noda. Now, after a successful crowdfunding campaign, Noda managed to raise 339% of his funding goal, originally asking for about 4 million yen, which is like 37,000 US dollars. Fans really destroyed this goal, donating around like 13.5 million yen, which is about $124,000 USD. Initially, Noda was only halfway serious when he first spoke about making the game. But once it was a reality, he got to work. Noda partnered with Hiroyuki Goto, an ex-Bandai Namco employee who was responsible for the Japanese puzzle series Kotoba no Puzzle, Moji Pitan. Together, they worked with Yoshimoto Games to bring the game to Switch. Now, this isn't Yoshimoto Games' first time working with Noda either. And also, they not only that, but they work on titles with a lot of other Japanese com uh, comedians and stars and stuff like that that appear on smart devices. Uh, and stuff like that, but this is the first time they have a project that actually was released on the Switch. Now, like I mentioned previously, there are 16 games on offer in the package, with two more actually on the way at some point in the future, as was just recently announced. Now, each of these games, like I said, too, have a varying degree of depth and gameplay. Now, if you want a full list of all the available games, I'd suggest checking out my English guide, which not only outlines everything that's included in the package, but it also lets you know how to play everything and what everything's about. Now, all of the games on offer here are pretty simple, and one might even say sloppy or amateur when it comes to like artwork and stuff like that. Gameplay itself ranges here from simple to slightly complicated. Now some of the simple games actually include the following. Tsurikawa. Here you're tasked with basically trying to keep a crudely animated version of Noda on his feet while he's in a moving and stopping train for as long as you can. It's a time attack type video. You just press left and right. Marshmallow. Ikuro yakiru kana. Uh, here you try to roast a marshmallow with just the press of a button in the fireplace while grandma isn't looking if she spots you before you finish roasting you lose Super block kuzushite so Basically, this is like a breakout clone where you don't control the paddle at the very bottom of the screen like you would usually But rather the head of this Japanese comedian Dekachan and try to avoid getting hit by a ball If you get hit your head gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's pretty ridiculous Gal's Fighter Owen. So here you select your fighter and then they duke it out. Now, in this game, you don't actually control the fighters themselves, but rather some onlookers that are cheering, which Owen means like to cheer. So you're cheering these people on, and you also can throw items onto the stage by rapidly pressing a button and stuff like that. And these items can either help or hinder the fighters. Now, some of the more complicated games include. Futomomo ga tetsu no yo ni katai otoko tetsuji. So, uh, here, I know it's a bit of a mouthful, here you're in control of a man with rock hard thighs in this beat em up type of a game. You can jump, you can move around this, you know, this environment, and you can also deflect projectiles from gun wielding enemies as they hit your thighs. Now, yeah, basically you just have to make sure you're standing in the right position to deflect uh, the incoming projectiles and stuff like that. Um, there are power ups here and multiple levels to go through. Onion Quest. Now an obvious nod to Dragon Quest, this is an RPG complete with a party of characters, random battles, leveling up, and even a way to save your progress, so this is definitely one of the more complicated games that are in the package. Hayaoshi Quiz. Now, basically here, you're controlling a character through a maze to reach a button. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, once you press the button, you have to answer a question that has been scrolling across the bottom of the screen. 
Of course, questions are all in Japanese, with the exception of a few math-related problems. And they change every 15 seconds, so you really need to know some Japanese here. I was playing with my wife, who is a native Japanese speaker, and yeah, she could obviously read Japanese a lot faster than me. Uh, so yeah, I, I got my ass kicked uh, some of the times with that. Sugi orimasu, hayoshi bus. So here you're riding a bus, and you need to get off at a very specific stop. Now, this is shown at the top of the screen. Well, the next stop that you're that the bus is going to is scrolling across the bottom of the screen. So basically, you only need to press a button on the controller here, and, and again, kind of with the previous Hayoshi game, Hayoshi means like basically push as fast as you possibly can. Um, but you'll need to be able to read Japanese here. Um, you need to hit three right presses to win. Again, I was playing with my wife, and yeah, her reading skills in Japanese are a lot better than mine because she's a native speaker. But yeah. There it is. And yeah, so I mean, this is just a, a brief selection of some of the stuff that's available here. Um, you know, my favorite thing is to play. I really like the Tsurikawa thing, you know, the one on the train. I thought that was pretty fun. I thought the hard die game, uh, that was a pretty uh, interesting one here too. Now I should note here that the rules do change somewhat for games when you're actually playing in single player. Now, generally speaking, the competitive games change to some kind of time-based or uh, based on high scores by performing well as long as possible for, before being knocked out by the CPU. Now, like I said, everything here does look a little bit rough from a visual perspective, but it's all done in a very deliberate way. Now, the games here are fun enough, but the best way to enjoy them is to play with other friends. And so, not all the games have multiplayer, like the Rock Thigh game and the Onion Quest, stuff like that. And they can be fun, but ultimately, I don't think they're going to keep you busy for far too terribly long. Party settings are where this game will shine. Now, as a bit of a bonus here, Playing the game actually nets you in-game crystals. Now these crystals can be used in a Noda Gacha machine, which contain a variety of collectibles from the game, namely artwork, music, and voice samples. And you can view your collection and even see your personal high scores here. Now these kind of things might keep players engaged for a long period of time, but for me, it wasn't really a drawback, a draw to constantly come back. Now, given the popularity of Nodage Party in Japan, the sales have already reached over 50,000 in just the first week. Now, I could see a smaller Western publisher taking a risk to put this game out in the West. Now, I think there is a market for something like this over there, especially for gamers who have a soft spot for oddball Japanese games. Now, as things stand right now, while gameplay here is fairly simple for pretty much all of the games, sounds maybe like games like Shogi 2, the sequel, hit sequel after a thousand years to Shogi 1, or this updated version of Mahjong. You know, some of the jokes or cultural references here will definitely fall flat for people that don't know about that stuff. Now, some things here are easy enough to understand, but the more story-heavy stuff, of which there are only a few, that stuff is just going to kind of go over heads of non-Japanese speakers and or people who aren't familiar with the current lineup of Japanese comedians, as some of those guys actually make appearances. Guys, I don't think there are any girls. Uh, they actually make appearances here. Super Nodage Party is definitely a very weird game. Noda himself kind of has embraced this kusoge here and knows that some of these games are not, are so bad that they're good. Now, while I don't think anything on offer here is really bad per se, there really isn't a whole lot of depth here if you're playing the game by yourself. Multiplayer is definitely where the fun lies with Nodage Party. Now, throwing back a few beverages with your friends and handing around some controllers is where you'll get the most enjoyment out of the game. It's not for everyone, obviously, but there is some fun to be had. As always, thank you guys out there for checking out this review. If you like what you see, please feel free to drop this video a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of podcasts, video reviews, looks at Japanese games just like this, and a whole lot more. Also, be sure to check out thefamicast.com for updates on Japanese games. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later. Game over.